Hi, and welcome to the video on using VSCPR chart. Um, in this video, I'll show you how to use the VSCPR chart to determine molecular geometry and electron domain geometry. All right, so um, as we've talked about throughout this unit, Lewis dot structures are limited because they do not allow us to, um, they do not show us the shapes or we cannot tell the appropriate bond angles from Lewis dot structures because they're flat structures. Whereas if the VSCPR structures, we are allowed to, um, we can use those structures to predict both shapes and predict bond angles. Now, there are two types of geometries that the VSCPR structures allow us to predict. First is electron domain geometry, which describes the arrangements of, both, of all the electron domains, both the bonds and lone pairs. And so since it's considering all electron domains, we, we just need to know the number of electron domains. Um, so we can determine the electron domain geometry by the number of electron domains only. On the other hand, molecular geometry, or AKA the shape, describes the arrangements of bonds only. And so in that case, we ignore the, the lone pairs. And in order for us to determine the molecular geometry or shape, we need to know how many lone pairs that we are ignoring. So for molecular geometry, it's determined both by the number of electron domains and number of lone pairs. If something has the same number of electron domains and same number of lone pairs, it will have the same molecular geometry or shape. So that information is sort of um, organized here in this VSCPR chart. Let's take a look at the information um, in this chart and how this chart is divided. The first column tells you the number of electron domains, and the second column tells you electron domain geometry. It's no coincidence that these two are next to each other because the, num the electron uh, domain geometry is determined by the number of electron domains only. The third column is the number of lone pairs, and the fourth column is the molecular geometry. Once again, it's no coincidence why these two are, um, there's no coincidence that, the, that these two are next to each other because the molecular geometry is determined by not only the number of electron domains, but also the lone pairs, because we need to know how many lone pairs we're going to ignore in order to know what our shape is. Another thing you may notice about this chart is that there are three major sections. The very top section corresponds to uh, structures that have two electron domains. The middle section corresponds to structures that have three electron domains and the bottom structure corresponds to the sec to structures that have four electron domains. And these sections are divided by these darker or, or bolder horizontal lines. Okay, now that we know how the VSCPR chart is organized, let's go into use, um, an example of how we can use this to determine electron domain geometry and molecular geometry of a molecule. For our first example, we're going to look at is CH4. The very first step is to draw the Lewis dot structure of the um, Molecule. So we're given the chemical formula CH4, and we go through a process of drawing our Lewis dot structure, and we should get a structure like this. Now, if you're not sure how to draw Lewis dot structures, just a quick side note, make sure you use the playlist to help you practice that skill. We're not going to cover that here. Okay, once you have your Lewis dot structure, the next step is to determine the number of electron domains and number of lone pairs from the Lewis dot structure. So we can go around. Uh, the central atom, find how many lone, uh, electron domains and lone pairs. In this case, we clearly see that we have four electron domains and there are zero lone pairs. Now we're going to use our number of electron domains and number of lone pairs to find the electron domain geometry and molecular geometry. Let's start with the electron domain geometry. So remember for the electron domain geometry, we only focus on the number of electron domains. And here we have four electron domains. So if you look in your chart here, Wherever there are four electron domains, remember this first column is four electron domains, it's going to have a tetrahedral electron domain geometry. So we know because it has four electron domains, the electron domain geometry is tetrahedral. Let's move on now to molecular geometry. So for molecular geometry, we um, have to consider how many lone pairs we need to ignore in the structure. In our structure, we have four electron domains and zero lone pairs. So for that, I would go again to the number of electron domains. I see that this is the section where there's four. And then I'm going to scroll over to the correct row where there's zero lone pairs. And that would be that first row in the four electron domain section. So here we have four electron domains, zero lone pairs. And the molecular geometry, which is in that fourth row there, is tetrahedral. So the molecular geometry is tetrahedral because we have four electron domains and zero lone pairs. 
Now you may remember that whenever the number of elect the number of lone pairs equals zero, both the electron domain geometry and molecular geometry will be the same because you have no lone pairs to ignore in the molecular geometry. Let's look at the next example, NH3. So the steps are going to be the same. So maybe you remember what the first step is. Great, you got to draw that Lewis dot structure. So here's the Lewis dot structure of NH3. Now what's the next step? Determine the number of electron domains and lone pairs. So we're going to find the central atom and then go around determining the number of electron domains and lone pairs. So this structure has four electron domains and one lone pair. Okay, now that we have our electron domains and lone pairs, we can determine the EDG and MG from those values. Let's start again with the EDG. So we have four electron domains. And you may remember from the last example, anything with four electron domains will have an electron domain geometry of tetrahedral. Doesn't matter how many lone pairs it has, as long as it has four electron domains, it's tetrahedral. Let's now look at the molecular geometry. Molecular geometry is a bit different. So molecular geometry, um, we have to consider how many lone pairs we have. So I need to find the row that has four electron domains and one lone pair. So if I scroll over, I see where there is one lone pair. And so that's the second row here in the four electron domain section. And they tell me that the shape is trigonal pyramidal. So molecular geometry is trigonal pyramidal because it has four electron domains and one lone pair. Remember, anything with four electron domains and one lone pair will be trigonal pyramidal. All right, let's look at our last example here, SO2. So again, the first step is to draw the Lewis dot structure. And in this case, you wouldn't, you're not expected to know how to draw a Lewis dot structure of something with an expanded octet like SO2. So this wouldn't be an example that I would give you, um, but I wanted to use this example here for the sole purpose of showing you how to use the VSTBR chart um, and look at uh, structures with, that have a different electron domain geometry than tetrahedral. So that's why we're using this here. But regardless whether or not you can draw the Lewis dot structure, that would be the first step of this process. So once you have your Lewis dot structure, you would determine the number of electron domains and lone pairs. Okay, now we know we have three electron domains and one lone pair. What I'm going to ask you to do now is to see if you can determine the electron domain geometry. Great, if you said trigonal planar, you would be correct. So because we have three electron domains, the electron domain geometry is going to be trigonal planar. Now how about the molecular geometry? Correct, since we have three electron domains and one lone pair, the molecular geometry is going to be angular or bent. Okay, now that we've gone through several examples, I just want to talk about one final note. Um, you may notice that this chart is not 100% complete. For example, we have um, a row, we, we're missing a row for where the, we have three electron domains and two lone pairs. A structure like that does exist, but we don't have that here. Or we are missing a row where we have four electron domains and three lone pairs. Again, that structure does exist, but we're missing it here. We also don't have a case where there's just one electron domain. And the reason why we, we don't have those things there is because all of those structures have two atoms. And anything with two atoms will have a linear molecular geometry and electron domain geometry. But let's take a look at a couple of examples. So first example is HF. We can see that this structure has one, two atoms in it. And its electron domain geometry is linear and its molecular geometry is also linear. Let's look at another example, N2, made up of one, two atoms. <clears throat> and again, it's electron domain geometry and molecular geometry are both linear. So that's just something to note. If you have something with two atoms, electron domain geometry, molecular geometry will always be linear. And that's how you can explain it. 
It's made of two atoms, so its electron domain geometry is, and molecular geometries are linear. And now it's time to some do some practice. So I would redo, or maybe do for the first time, practice problems one through four in part three of the unit four day, um, let's just say day three packet, sorry. And you want to check your answers and correct your mistakes, because remember, the more you practice, the better you get. So this is what the practice should look like. It starts here, and you're going to go through problems one through four. All right, that's it for this video, folks. Hope you found it helpful. Have a quality day.